the cap, we're under the cap. Yeah. So even if you go from 46 to, to 50, the, the only people who might end up get, getting penalized is it depends on how many people are on that chronological list wanting designation and whether we hit up against the cap with them. And my understanding at this point is we don't. But again, we will verify the numbers and see if, if we do. But right now, it doesn't appear to be a problem based on what we have so far. Okay. So nobody's going to lose their Yeah, I think license. we need to get beyond this numbers game here for well, a while. It's only the biggest part of the Well, it really yeah, is. But I, at this time, I want to go to yep. the public to hear the public comments, okay. and then we'll come back. and. If I could offer just one other verif uh, clarification regarding the uh, – the release of the information, um, just to, to be upfront about it. This is Allison Glassy, Assistant CEO. The um, agenda summary that was released with the agenda last Thursday indicated that the recommendations themselves would be available Friday, 5 o'clock, and would be posted on the planning team website at that time. The recommendations were posted on the website sometime a little after five o'clock and they were emailed to uh, the board members and they were emailed to the individuals who had been part of the community ongoing yeah. electronic dialogue so I, I wanted to be clear I recognize that that's not the same as being part of the packet but it did meet the um, legal requirements for uh, having that information out, and I regret that the paper copies uh, were not there. Thank you. Thank you for recognizing that, Allison. Okay, members of the public, uh, Wendy Roberts, followed by uh, Monty Reed. Yes, my name is Wendy Roberts. Um, I want to thank you for taking the large amount of time that this is taking and will continue to take to finally get to the bottom of some of these issues. Um, I want to speak to the cap because it is one of the more acrimonious issues. Hard to imagine how it could create so much misery in town, but it is. And uh, two uncharacteristically elegant things about the Mendocino Town Plan, which is not an elegant document, is they anticipated that if you set a cap today and then residences grow, well, you should allow for some mechanism for adding to that cap. And they added that 13 to 1 ratio. Not in probably the clearest of language, but I think we've, pro it sounds like we've all come to the same conclusion about the intent. You've got a cap, more residences grow, once there are 13, you add one to the cap. And the other thing they did was say, we understand that a CAC, a bunch of local citizens, did this data collection in 1989. This thing isn't going to be certified overnight, so we're going to say we might have made mistakes, something might have changed. So we're building in to this approved document that if something happens between now and the time it's certified, it will be corrected as a mapping error. And mapping errors, according to my research, do not require Coastal Commission approval. Um, mapping errors are quite specific. Um, and it was built into the document to allow that to happen. Now, Y'all have looked at the work of the CAC, and you have somewhat differently interpreted their decision about summer homes. You're counting them back in, and I think that's appropriate. I think if it, this had been done by a totally impartial staff at the time, that's probably they would have included them. At any rate, you're, you're doing that, and I think the mapping error adjustment is really the same thing on the other side. You're saying, well, they're there was some flux in the data. But let me read you two things, and, and we did send these to you, so I'm doing this more for the record than anything else, um, if I didn't leave it back at the other end of town. Um, the first is a letter from Raymond Hall, the planning director, and it is dated 9... 90, uh, 92 and it says, 
adoption of the town plan results in the regulation of vacation home rentals. New VHRs and SURs are subject to the 13 residential to one VHR SUR ratio. The Board of Supervisors has declared that a business license in effect on April 7th 1992 constitutes evidence of an existing VHR or SUR. Based on figures provided by Bud Cam and checked corrected by Gary Berrigan, the number of existing VHRs 34 and SURs 21 as of April 7, 1992 was approximately 55. That was adopted by the Board of Supervisors you set a standard for what would be included as a mapping error. I only have the letter, but I'm sure we could find the minutes. And then um, in November 1892, your Department of Planning went public with this in a letter to applicants for licenses. And in that letter, they said, the Mendocino County Board of Supervisors has adopted a policy that limits the number of vacation home rentals and single unit rentals in the town of Mendocino. The board's policy requires that a ratio of 13 long-term residential units to either one vacation home or one single unit rental be maintained